Hi, doctors. Welcome to the Arc Knights 1.5 anniversary live stream. I'm your host today, Elliot. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. It's great to meet Arc Knights fans from all over the world. We are so excited to present to you guys what we have been working on for the past seven months. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to celebrate this milestone with all of you. Yeah, it's our 1.5 anniversary. I know it's kind of rare to hear that, but thanks everyone for playing, supporting, and loving Arcanites. And thank you for tuning in today. Yep, as usual, we will start with some ritual inspection, talking about the in-game events we had in the first half of 2021, and share some interesting statistics with you all. Just check in how you were doing, you know, or review your accomplishments. Sounds good. Among all the events, there were many of them that I really enjoyed. Don't you worry. We will go through them one by one today. After that, we are gonna reveal the new event coming to Arknights. Maybe you can take a guess of what it is from the decker of the session today, if it's not too abstract. <laughs> well, I know the answer, but let's move on first. Here's a short video to help you guys recall the events over the past seven months. Hmm. Enjoy. It gives me goosebumps every time when I watch those animation trailer. I feel like I'm ready to fight. Okay, doctors, among the 11 events, which one's your favorite? Please let us know by leaving a comment in the chat. Personally, my favorite was episode eight, Roaring Flare. Oh, that one. Yeah, even though I spent a week just trying to finish the stages and the story. The story was yeah. really well written, I thought. Yeah, uh, it might take a little bit of time, but it's definitely fun to watch. And it was, it was our first time to see an animation embedded in the story, right? Yes, that part when Emiya picked up the sword and mm. transformed into a guard. That was <laughs> yeah. on fire. I feel, yeah. Well, personally, I like Gavio, the Great Chief Returns, and KOB's funkiness the most. Ah, the roguelike. Mm. Yes, I wish I could play that mode any time. I miss it. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving to our retrospection. The first event following Episode 7 was... Heart of Surging Flame Rerun, right? Yes, that was the event where we first met Thorns, the master of Destreza, and the operator with the most outfits. Wait, what? What? You never seen the meme with Thorns had Photoshop on different uh, operators' bodies? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh god, don't remind me of that. Yeah. Shush, I once tried to put him in Scuddy's outfit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> okay, sorry, just saying. <laughs> well, what else do you remember about the event in addition to the memes of Thorns? Uh, let me think. More outfits, definitely. And the Obsidian Festival was surely a blast. You know, DDD, Emperor, and Alive Until Sunset. Their music was amazing. And for those doctors who might have missed the event last year, got their chance to watch the story and feel the vacation vibe, which is all I need right now. You remember you're still working, right? No. Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Moving on to the next one. Operation Blade, yes, that was on fire. <laughs> yes, the, the theme song. Yeah, I remember I always just stay in the lobby for the song. Yeah, me too. I think <laughs> the lyrics fit in really well with the contingency contract vibes. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yes, and we do have some statistics to show you in Come this on. event. Bring it on. Here comes the first one, the most used operator ranking in contingency contract season two, Operation Blade. Yes, I'm curious about that too. Let's start. Yes. 
Who are the top three? And the top three are Telopsis, Saria, and Myrtle. Wow! Congrats to Myrtle. Congrats! You always see her flag waving in the battleground of CC. And let's take a look at this season's permanent site, Deserted Factory. By the way, what was your highest contingency level on this site? Come on, please go easy on me. You know I'm not that good at challenging high risks. <laughs> all right, all right. Then let's check out how other doctors did in this operation. As we can see, more than 11% of doctors managed to reach risk 18. Well done, my fellow doctors! And more than 1% of doctors accomplished risk 23. Moreover, there were only 0.02% of doctors having reached contingency level 31. That's incredible. How did they do that? I wonder about that too. <laughs> Maybe those doctors didn't lose their sanity. Mm, that sounds reasonable. Those doctors who had reached risk 31, you are all suspected. <laughs> oh. I'll have a meeting about that later. <laughs> all right, all right. Jokes aside, that's really amazing. Press F to send all our respect to those fellow doctors. Respect. And the next event is Gavio, the great chief returns. That is one of my favorites. Welcome to the jungle. You made another meme. N no, not at this time. But I will think about that later. But to be honest, I would love to be the pilot of the massive mechanical monster made by Zumama. That's super dope! Man, I'm jealous of the High Priest. No, don't do anything to the High Priest. No, I won't. The High Priest is cute, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just traumatized after fighting a parrot as tanky as Patriot. <laughs> Wait, you know what? I started thinking of making a meme about these two. Please spare us. <laughs> okay, just kidding. We actually got some data about KOB's fungimus that we would like to share with doctors. Are you ready? Let's go! Mm. Welcome to the review of KOB's fungimus. Now, I'm curious about this data. Let's check it out. Okay, first, the total number of delicious honey biscuits that all doctors obtain is more than one billion. Wow, over a billion. I'm sure KOB will appreciate this number. She'll be happy about that. Moving on to the next part. The Cunning Merchant sold around 12 million items in total to all doctors mm. and earned around 100 million original wow. ingots. This merchant knows how to make money, right? Truth. And next part, during Doctor's Adventure, Rhodes Island provided more than 1 million water boilers in total. That's sweet. Thanks to the water boiler, it brings me life and hope. For it, real. It could be a totem for doctors. Yes, it's kind of like a soulmate. It reminds me to never give up hope. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Okay. And in KOB's Funky Mist, doctors had taken nearly 400,000 collectibles from Duck Lord and around 540,000 collectibles from Duck Lord's bodyguard. Poor Duck Lord. Mm, what we take, we gain from others. Don't be like that. That's Talula's word. I'm just saying, it's true. Okay. Well, next, in Lost Victoria Night. More than 32% of doctors chose the left half of the coconut shell. Yes, and around 22% of doctors chose the other half. Yes, and more than 46% of doctors chose to ask the knight rhetorically. Hmm, that part reminds me, what really is the sacred originium grenade? Hmm, don't ask me, I also want to know. <laughs> Alright, now we have received a complaint from Big Bob. In KOB's Funky Mist, Big Bob's farm had been invaded for nearly 1.5 million times, and Big Bob had lost nearly 70, 70 million originium slugs for that. 77 million. Well, that's quite a job. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Big Bob just wants to live a peaceful life. Please, doctors. The next one, in Demso in Distress, doctors chose to help her for more than 300 times. 300,000 times in total. Yep, it's great to see so many kind-hearted doctors. Yes, and those bad guys also paid the price for their lives. Doctors knocked down nearly one and a half sturdily, one and a half million sturdily built men in total. Yeah, you gotta pay for what you've done. That's the rule. I agree. All right, we also had some special operators to help us in KOB's Funky Mist, right? Yes, Storm Eye Touch. Sharp and other operators. Mm. They will help me a lot during this event. Yeah. Now let's see how many times they helped doctors throughout the event. 
So, it was more than one and a half million times that doctors use Rhode Island temporary operators in this event. A huge thank you to all of them. Salute. Okay, now moving on to the last part. At the end of Kobe's Funky Mist, there were 106 doctors who cleared the stage without blocking Ross Hammer Warrior, Gravestone, and Frozen Monstrosity. That is a great accomplishment. How did they do that? Mm, I have no idea. Maybe it's a miracle. <laughs> Maybe, Amazing. right? Amazing. <laughs> Wait, if I'm not wrong, mm. I believe we also have a questionnaire about Kobe's Funky Mist, right? Yeah, questionnaire. Yes, we have also collected the data from the questionnaire. Let's see what we have. So, for the first part, the operators that doctors deploy for the first time in the integrated strategies, top three. And who would that be? Third place, Mayor. Yes, operators that can summon units are great to use in Fungamist for sure. I agree. Then let's see who's the second place. It is Thorns. Hey, Destreza, my <laughs> man Thorn. Mm -hmm. His third skill was definitely rampaging in Fungamist. Yes. And finally, first place, Scene. Oh, that's somewhat unexpected, I think. But you have to believe it. It's the data. And Scene is the event bonus operator from Operation Blade. That might explain a lot. Yeah, well, that sounds cool for Scene. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, the MBO is known as the most valuable operators in Kobe's Funky Mist. Third place, Silver Ash. Reasonable. Silver Ash's skills are all useful in Kobe's Fungamist. Hmm, I agree. And second place goes to Seria. Another operator that all skills of hers can help you during this event. Hmm. Then let's see who's the real MBO. It is Thorns. Thorns. He deserves the first place. <laughs> Agreed. His wide attack range and his self-healing talent can help you clear a lot of stages in this event. Yep, he definitely is the MVP. Mm. So, in Kobe's Funky Mist, the ending Doctor gets the most is... Wait, wait, wait. That was an ending? What are you talking about? There were more than one ending. <laughs> did you miss uh, anything? <laughs> really? I guess I missed a lot of fun. Yes, sure you did. Okay, the ending Doctor get the most is... Dust of Dreams. Ah, I have to check out some of the doctor's recordings on social media. You should. Here come the three hardest stages in KOB's Funky Mist. Let's see. They are Fanatic Siege, Baron's Cadet, and Masterless Colossus. Ah, those stage names have brought back some old memories. Well, I'd assume those were not some happy memories. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Okay, next we are moving on to Rewinding Breeze. Surter's coming. Calm down, Surter's great. She makes our lives much easier. Grateful for that. But we did have stories about many other operators in this event, remember? True. In Rewinding Breeze, we learned about Surter, mm. Irene, Mint, and April for mm. the first time. I remember Mudrock was in the story oh, yeah, too, yeah, yeah, before yeah. she officially joined Rhode Island, right? I remember that. And also, Fenton's story was quite impressive. I feel like it was a great experience for me to learn about the operator's past through those stories. Absolutely agree. Mm. Some great stories. Mm. Then the next event is Maria Nero. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 24th Casimir's Major. God, stop it, please. I feel like the event lobby music starts buzzing around my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. Of course. <laughs> the story about a Casimir's Major was so exciting. We were there witnessing how Blamishine overcame every strong competitor. Yes. I also love the last part about how her elder sister, Margaret mm. Nell, suddenly broke into the arena and fought against the Withered Knight and Corrupted Knight at the same time. Yes, the story of this event was thrilling. Also, we had some new faces in this event as well. You know, Blamishine, Nero's younger sister, and Whistlash. She is both Blamishine and Ner Nero's aunt, you know? And Allstar and Bubble. I love this event, story, music, and art style. Oh, and the outfits. Phantom's outfit was a classic. Hmm, one of the best for sure. And next, what do we have? Here it is, Roaring Flare, my favorite episode so far. Mm. And this is also the climax of the main story, the final battle between Rhode Island and Reunion. Yes, 
I still remember how Amir and Chen fought together against Tallulah. Oh, you mean the double dragon scene? Yeah, of course. When The moment when Amir pulled out Ying Xiao from the flame. I felt ignited by that flame too. <laughs> the transformation scene was meaningful. Um, but I do remember that there was a requirement require you to lead to Amir first. Did that bother you at all? No, not at all. I already had Elite 2 Amir. Good for I mean, you. She's awesome. How can you not Elite 2 her? Yes, yes, yes. Also, in this episode, Mudrock and Rose Montes have finally come to us. Rose Montes is cute. And powerful. She is a great sniper with a wide attack range. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw Mudrock's face under her armor for the first time. Well, I bet you wouldn't believe that face belongs to Mudrock when we were still in Volume 1. Yeah, I was expecting something a bit scarier than that. Scarier? Is it like, your gramophone seems fine, but now it's mine? <laughs> oh, stop it. Don't remind me of that. Now, let's move on to the next. All right, all right. Kodal Brawry Run. Yes, that was a cool event. I like the story about the Penguin Logistics. Penguin Logistics. I was glad to have that back. Hope to see more of those guys in the future. Yeah. And do you remember the first time we saw Rat King in the event stage? Oh, that was a tough operation. His shield was killing me at that time. Yes, but this time we have Surter. Yes, it was like revenge time. I just dropped my Surter in front of the Rat King and clicked the Twilight button. <laughs> then everything was done. Don't do that. <laughs> Thank you, Soto. You are my hero. Okay, okay. Now we all know that you are believing in Soto's supremacy. Then, the next event was the WWF collaboration. The coexistence event. Collaborating with WWF. What can I say? Amazing. In this collaboration event, Arknights and WWF were working together to raise funds and public awareness for nature. Also, we had a new operator, Pure Stream, remember? And a free Cliff Hearts outfit in game. Great outfit. Indeed. And besides, we had released a vlog and a documentary to show you WWF's conservation efforts in the Wollong Nature Reserve. Yes, that vlog and documentary were impressive. Mm -hmm. I loved seeing the natural environment with those snow leopards. They were so cute. Yes, and as for now, we are still calculating the total donation amount, which will include the donation from the Japanese and Korean server as well. So it might take some time, but we will share the number with all of you after the calculation is done. Yes, please be patient and pay attention to the official social media accounts. Moving on to the next, the Contingency Contract Season 3, Operation Cinder. Guess what? I've got my bagpipe outfit in Operation Cinder. You know, the backpack outfit is stunning. I believe that outfit must be one of the reasons why so many doctors were playing so hard. Yeah, I really wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, we also have some statistics from Operation Cinder to share with you. Let's take a look at them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, in Contingency Contract Season 3, Operation Cinder, who will be the top three most used operators? Okay, do you think this list would fit our expectations? I mean, those operators must be really active throughout the season. Plus, that's most doctors' choices, so it wouldn't be wrong. Now, it's time to show the top three operators. Let's see who they are. Okay, let's see. Number three, Surter. Wow, that's amazing. I never thought Surter th would be just number three. <laughs> Yeah, you think she'll be the top one. <laughs> okay, well, the second place goes to Seria. Okay, I accept it. That sounds reasonable to me. Who is number one? Maybe you have the answer. Number one is Myrtle. Oh, Myrtle again. The little queen of CC. You are right. She deserves the gold medal. Yes, okay. Well, what else do we have? Then we also have the data to show you the contingency level that doctors achieved in Operation Cinder. Let's see what the data will be this time. Okay, so for contingency level 18, nearly 16% of doctors met this challenge. For doctors who want the bagpipe outfit, getting to that level won't stop you, right? <laughs> you really love that outfit, I can tell. Okay, and more than 1% of doctors accomplished Rix 25. Moreover, 0.15% of doctors reached risk 33. That's crazy. Yeah, they just made it. No matter what difficulties they were facing, they just managed to find a way out. What can I say? Press F again for those doctors. Yeah, they deserve it. They definitely earned the respect. All right, moving on to the next event. Now we are getting to Men's Field Break event. This event was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 
I like prison break stories. You are telling me. And in this event, we had our six star guard mountain coming to Rhodes Island. And besides, Sari's prison guard outfit, the law. That's just cool. Mm. Be careful, doctors. Saria is watching you. And the new Icefield messenger outfits are great as well. Mm -hmm. I love the weedy one. What about you? Mm. Elysium Snowy Echo. Let me guess. Because of all the water boilers it holds? <laughs> you got the point. <laughs> okay, I guess right. <laughs> then, moving on to the next one, we have Beyond Here. Ah, I quite like the stories from this event. Mm, me too. And we also had three cute operators coming to Rhodes Island. Beanstalk, Iris, and R. Chattel. Also, the Cambrian series outfits. Mm, right, right. And there was an event bonus outfit, Frosted Breath for Silence. Did you get it? Sure. I wouldn't miss the chance for sure. That outfit was a must get in this event. Mm -hmm. Now, the ongoing event, Contingency Contract Season 4, Operation Lead Seal. I can't wait to see what contingency level doctors are going to reach this time. Mm, me too. And don't forget to join the event and redeem the event bonus operator two year. Yes, don't forget it. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, before I move to the next chapter, mm -hmm. have you ever heard about an ancient Chinese story called Golden Millet Dream, Huang Liang Yi Meng? Huang Liang Yi Meng. Yes. Okay. Have you ever heard? Tell us about it. Okay. The story is about a Dang Yanao scholar taken in by a tavern owner. Then he fell asleep, dreaming about getting fame, falling in love, raising kids, and having all the best thing in the life. But suddenly, he woke up and realized all oh, that was only a dream. And the pan of the millet the tavern owner made for him when he fell asleep was still cooking on the fire. You didn't just tell us that story for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. The ancient Chinese story in the dream. Are you saying the new event is going to take place in Yen? Well, you will know it very soon. Let's watch a video first. に染まった罪深い魂に許しを乞う資格なんてない。さすがドクター。賢明な決断だね。ほほう。世間には多様な健康があるのか。見聞は広がったぞ。言葉では伝わりにくい。Welcome back, doctors. Did you enjoy the event trailer? Some of you might have guessed it right. The new event coming to Arcanites is Who is Real, which will be officially released on July 30th. I'm still shocked how ink painting was used in the trailer. Mm. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. The overall aesthetic was just on point. I agree. Huge thanks to the development team for trying so hard to bring a new art style to Arcanites. Seeing all this ancient Chinese architecture made me wonder how long they must have spent to blend this art style into the world. Mm. 
I know this event might seem a little bit different from the previous one, but we definitely want to try different things to bring doctors new experiences. But it's also very reasonable because the story takes place in a world of painting, you know. How so? Is it something we can mention in the live stream? Um, Wait, I know you're gonna say <laughs> I don't want to spoil the surprise for the doctors. Blah blah blah. Well, I can say that the story starts off as two operators commissioned by Nian and embarking on a journey looking for someone. You know, you didn't say anything, right? The only <laughs> name I heard in this sentence was Nian. We basically just saw them in the trailer. Come on. I saw Lava, a girl named Dusk, and all of them. And you're still trying to save a surprise for later. Well, have some patience. I will introduce them later. And actually, there's a character in the story that didn't show up in the video. Which one? Coco da yo, Coco da yo. Oh God! <laughs> Seriously, Cruz. Yes. Sorry, I should have given you a heads up. <laughs> okay. Why don't we uh, start introducing the event right away? Okay. The first thing we want to show you guys is the new mechanism, Mark of Hui and Ming. As you can see in the video, the operators place on the tiles will gain the same attribute as the mark. It looks cool. It's kind of like the Chinese concept of yin and yang. So how it works in the stages is basically whoever has the same mark as the enemy will gain extra defense against them. So you should try to deploy the defenders on the same marks as the enemy. Exactly. And if you deploy the damage dealers on the opposite marks, they can deal more damage. Ah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And do know that enemies who pass through the mark of Hui and Ming will switch their marks to the other. Okay, that gives more challenges. I like that. Well, we've also picked two new enemies to give you a brief introduction. Okay, the first one, Smarty. <laughs> Smarty. The name is pretty to the point. Yeah, I, I can see that. And I see that it wanders around and explodes if it touches any fellow ink spirits with opposite attributes. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't want to see that. Hmm. But I think doctors will find a way to prevent that. You know, exploding from each other. Okay, the next one is Blindy. It says that it doesn't get along with Stabby. Who's Stabby? Hmm, I believe it is another enemy. <laughs> okay, well let's see what Blindy can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it can only be blocked by units of the same attribute. Mm -hmm. That's tricky. Imagine it passes through a mark of Hui and Ming and shifts its own mark. We've got to have something to tackle that, right? Mm, well, yes, and we will leave this for doctors to find out in a game. I knew it. Come on. <laughs> we will have more important stuff to introduce. Something that doctors will be most interested in. It's got to be new operators. Sure. Isn't this? This is lava with a completely new look, right? I think I've seen her in Ancient Forge before. Bingo! This is the first alternate operator in Ark Knights, Lava the Purgatory. Alternate operator? Mm. Sounds interesting. Is it similar to Amir's transformation? Mm, not really. Alternate operator is the grown-up version of some of your very familiar operators or another side of them. Mm, that's awesome. It sounds like doctors and operators are growing together. Mm, surely they are. Lava has sharpened her skills through extremely tough training. Her arts can now deal higher AOE damage. Are you referring to her skill, Ring of Hellfire? Exactly. Lava envelopes an ally and herself within a Ring of Fire with her second skill, inflicting arts damage every second to all surrounding enemies. And her talent grants her lots of SP and thus enables her to activate the skill soon after her deployment. It looks like some beautiful fireworks. It must be difficult to get her, right? Nah, -uh. you can get Lava the Purgatory for free during the event. You've got to be kidding me. The first ever alternate operator is free for everyone. Yes, the point is that everyone has the chance to witness Lava's growth. But let's move on to the next operator. A fan, Chinese copper coin, fortune stick. Is he a Taoist master? <laughs> More of a fortune teller, I'd say. Mm. His name's very special too. Mr. Nothing, nothing. Like he has nothing to tell. Well, I do think that his name might come from a Chinese idiom. Yeah. Yeah. I know you want to practice your Chinese, Alex. 自虚无有, yeah? Yes, great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. 
Yeah, the idiom can mean unrealistic or made-up stories or figures. His power is still worth nothing despite his name. As a Yan martial arts expert, he uses a Yin Yang fan and works as a specialist in Rhode Island. By the way, have you ever heard about any martial arts? Maybe Chinese ones. Kung Fu. <laughs> yes, that one. We already have Wai Fu, who knows Kung Fu in Rhode Island, right?、Mm. But compared to Wai Fu, who's always very serious and strict, Mr. Nothing has a more sophisticated personality, and he is slippery to some extent. It sounds like his first skill, cautious retreat.、Mm. It is said that when the skill is activated, Mr. Nothing becomes less likely to be targeted by enemy attacks,、mm. and will restore HP after his own HP is below a certain percentage.、Mm. Well, that's right. But Mister Nothing is also a man who you can count on. Let's see what he can do when he gets serious. Oh my! That seems to be three kinds of colors of aura around him. That's amazing. Yes, yes. And when he activates his second skill, Wax and Win, one out of the three effects will be randomly triggered, and each with very different yet powerful outcome. Now let's take a look at the six-star operator.、Mm. Uh, is she a monk? A cute monk, though.、Mm-hmm. This is Operator Saga, who plays an important role in Who Is Real story. She's a wandering monk from Higashi, a vanguard as she is. Yeah, Saga deals a great amount of damage to the enemies. Her talent, Clear Mind, enables her to gain physical dodge and the ability to restore HP for seconds. Know that this effect can only be activated once after her HP falls below a certain percentage. Sounds like an all-round vanguard who can generate DP, deal high damage, and also take damage from enemies. Yes, and when her blades out, as you can see in the video, there are red leaves falling from her blade. I love this effect.、You、like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, I saw a red symbol on that enemy.、Hmm. Is that some kind of new debuff? Well, that's another interesting fact. See, as a monk, Saga tries her best not to hurt lives. Her talent preaching will leave the enemy with one HP and inflict critically wounded to enemies. These enemies will automatically die after a short while, and if they are killed by allies, the attacker will gain SP. You mean she never kills enemies but lets them go instead? Yes. As shown in the video, doesn't she just turn those enemies into ash? Well, that's true, but that's her second skill, Cleansing Evil. Deals great damage to several enemies within a cross area, and then eliminates enemies that are critically wounded. Okay, now, now we still have our final guest to show up. Finally, I guess dusk is coming. Tada! Let's meet up our new six-star caster, Dusk. My. She's gorgeous. Well, from her hands, tail, horns, and eyes, I guess she is the one Nian is looking for. Or is she related to Nian? Well, I said nothing. That's just your speculation. Oh, come <laughs> on! Enlighten me a bit. Well, I will leave that to the event story. Go enjoy yourself. So much suspense. From her appearance, though, she looks like a mysterious figure who's just descended from a traditional Chinese painting. Her hair spreads itself out like ink dropped in water.、Mm-hmm. I believe the devs and artists really have given all out on this character. You know what? Even her skill attacks come with different ink flowing visual effects. Amazing ink flowing! My wild guess is that she's a caster with A O E attacks. Am I right? Bingo! You are right. And she's not just a caster with A O E attack. She is the caster capable of A O E attacks, crowd control, DPS, and summoning. She's also a summoner. Yes, her first two skills boost her attack range and AOE arts damage in different ways. However, once she has promoted to Elite Two, she will be able to summon a Freeling at the location of her target to block the enemies with her first attack after deployment. That is awesome.、Mm-hmm. Hold on, did you say a Freeling? Yes, I did. Then how do you explain this?、Oh. Three Freelings on the battlefield at the same time. And that's where her third skill comes in handy. Once she activates this skill, Dusk will have increased range and splash area for her attacks. She now also summons or refreshes a freeling at the location of her targets with each of her strikes. 
That sounds like a one-man army to me. What's more, her talents ensure that she will gain a stack of attack increase for each foe she or her freelings take down. With her attack buff stacking up to the limit, she just eliminates those who stand in her way in one stroke. Can't wait to bring her home. Mm -hmm. Is she in the same headhunting banner with Saga? That's what I'm gonna talk about. There will be a limited headhunting radar banner, Hidden Moon, which includes Saga and Dusk. Sounds like I'll have to save up my Originium Primes. <laughs> Me too. Then the following news will definitely excite you. For every doctor who logs in during the event, you can get a free 10-row headhunting permit, which is limited to pull in a Hidden Moon only. So please, don't forget to log in and use the permit. Absolutely, don't forget to pick up your free 10 roll permit. And what's more, doctors can pull one free headhunting every day during the 14 day event, which will be 14 free pulls if you log in daily. Plus the free 10 roll permit, there'll be a total of 24 mm. free pulls for every doctor in the event. Yes, and Alex, do you recall that I said doctors can get Lava the Purgatory for free during the event? Yes, I do. Yes, during the event, doctors could obtain Dusk Instinct from event stages, which can be exchanged for valuable items, including Lava the Purgatory. And don't forget those limited furniture pieces as yes, well. Yes, that one as well. And some special gifts will be sent to all doctors. Mm. I'm seeing a random sanity portion and headhunting permit. Yes, those will be included along with some other materials. That's what we can call the good stuff. No, no, no. That's called a part of the good stuff. What? <laughs> we have Longman Lucky Strips. Ah, I might need to save all my luck in the Hidden Moon banner. No. During the event, you can get two lottery trials after your daily login. Between the lotteries you picked, the one with the higher amount of random will be the final daily reward. Determined by the higher amount. I mm -hmm. love this rule. Yeah, then you're gonna love it more. If the amount of random in your daily reward is less than 400, let's say, you will be granted an extra trial the next day. Wow, my things are looking up. Yes, please notice that all the daily trials will be refreshed the next day and cannot be accumulated. Yes, doctors, please make sure you pick up the lucky reward every day. Mm -hmm. And next. There's still a next. Yes. Oh, let's... Then let's see the next. Ah, the snowy surprise login event. Mm -hmm. Doctors can obtain Whisper Rain's outfit and even limited furniture pieces. Oh my lord, look at her! Whisper Rain in Chi Pao! That is breathtaking! <laughs> We're so cool, buddy. By the way, Chi Pao is a traditional Chinese dress. You know what? Forget the cool. How can you calm down when you see that? <laughs> okay, and it is available on day 13 for yes, free. Yes, and for free! <laughs> oh my god. No, no, we have more than just one new outfit. Let's check them out. Are you okay? Dude. <laughs> I zoned out a bit. Okay. Ian's T-Power outfit is awesome. <laughs> I just want to give all my praise to this outfit. Yeah. Besides, Ox and Hung's outfit look pretty cool as well. Yeah. Somehow, Hung's just a driver turns out to be the opposite. Meaning. <laughs> I know. And Ox's outfit is both classic and fashionable. Yes. And don't forget, there's also a new outfit for the Doran. Oh, Tanjing Court. It looks like a quiet place for an artist, perfect for a painter. Yes, um, doesn't it feel peaceful looking at it? It looks like a beautiful setting for an art studio. Mm -hmm. Look at them, Nian, Ak and Hang are in the art studio, right? <laughs> yeah, Nian is wearing the traditional Chinese dress. Mm, and Ak is just like sitting on a chair. Oh, and the phone is ringing. <laughs> <laughs> it's his mom <laughs> saying, Ak. Come home for dinner. Oh, come on. I'm gonna get this outfit. And all the three of them. Rumor has it that Tanjin Court was just one of the many layouts for Dusk's art studio. Well, the only thing I could guarantee is that it is just the beginning of Dusk's legend. Mm. Can't you just reveal some more for us now? Mm, nope. But there is something that could be revealed. The new medal set for <laughs> Who Is Real. Quite a sense of art, don't you think? Yeah. But it also stands for new challenges. Doctors need to master Mark of Hui and Ming in order to obtain the medals. Oh my god, just thinking about it makes me dizzy. Oh, come on, don't be dramatic. <laughs> After all, that's not the only challenge. 
There's more. You bet. Ah, a new annihilation stage. That's right. Abandoned mine will later replace the current annihilation stage, frozen abandoned city. Well, at least there will be tons of resources to obtain once we've cleared the new stage. New arundums. And speaking of resources, we do have... Rhodes Island Resource Pack. Mm, yes, Rhodes Island Resource Pack contains multiple materials, Originite Prime and a 10-row headhunting permit. Sounds like a great deal. Absolutely. Okay, I believe that is all for the new updates, yes? Hmm, yes and no. I actually still have a surprise for you guys. A special campaign, I think. Mm, yes. We created a song especially for Who Is Real with a group of talented musicians and artists. And today, we are going to show you guys a teaser. Why can't you just play the whole thing? I guess you won't mind a little bit of waiting and surprise. Please enjoy the teaser of Never Give Up, produced by Stay Loose, featuring Sarah. And the music video is directed and produced by Si Han Lin, an independent visual artist who has been nominated for several arts awards, including the Ottawa International Animation Festival Award. Enjoy! Is this a dream or is this reality? Who knows what Did you enjoy the teaser? I did, I can't wait to watch the whole thing. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> the visual design, that fluid ink animation, and the music for mm. sure. Even though we just heard a short clip, mm. that voice was gorgeous. Well, the complete soundtrack will be released after our event is live. Please pay attention to our social media for more information. Yes, looking forward to that. Yes, stay tuned. And I have to say thank you to the music production team that put the art piece together. Also, Sihan has added her unique art style and flavor to the video. It was a great experience to work with everyone on this project. Yes, doctors, please press F to show your appreciation to the team if you thought the same as us. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on to the next part. We are gonna talk about some cute merch. Ah, what's this about? During the past half of the year, we were trying to expand the categories and types of the merchandise for doctors to pick from the Yostar official store. We prepared some special merch for the previous events and also Who is Real? Wanna check them out? Sure! Mm -hmm. The first merch is a pin set featuring some operators who joined Rhodes Island in the past half of the year in chibi style. Yeah, look at them! Nice. The pins are pretty easy to carry. Mm -hmm. I feel a real connection to these operators. Yeah, I feel yeah. Let's look that look at them one by one. That Surter with the ice cream really caught my eyes. Yeah, Surter loves ice cream. Imagine her getting super buff after eating it. <laughs> How strong would that be? Okay, in the same set, Blimey Shine seems like holding something. Is that a doll of no? Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. Look how delightful she looks. And her sister has always been a role model for her, right? She truly is. Mm -hmm. And the two fellows over there seem quiet. Mm. Ros Montis and Mudrock. Ros is taking notes there. It's so cute. It's like she's taking notes on doctor's orders. Yeah, she has always been a good kid. And Mudrock below is just taking a breath from her helmet, right? Oh yeah. She looks shy, doesn't she? It's not what she's usually like anyway. Mm. And the last set, Mountain and Archetto. They just joined Rhodes Island not long ago. Mountain seems like a strong and sturdy guy, but he's actually a gentleman. Reading a book, tasting wine, just chilling, really. And for Archetto, we've learned that she's a master of brewing, right? Yes, when can we try some? <laughs> Chill, later, okay? We have more to introduce. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. The next item we have is a rowing flare themed mouse pad for doctors to have a little company during gameplay. Hmm. Seems the mouse pad itself is telling you a story, you know? The scene of a decisive battle between Tallulah and Rhodes Island. A real vivid image. <laughs> I love it a lot. 
Okay, and I have to mention something slightly practical. It's made of rubber, and it is to some extent dirtproof because of the dark color. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. I need a mouse pad. I'm gonna get one for sure. You should. Okay, next we have two acrylic standees here. One features the main characters from Rowing Flare, Amiya and Chan, and the other features characters from Gavio, The Great Chief Returns, Unek Tease, Gavio, and Tommy Me. Shall we start with the Roaring Flare one? Okay. They are both multi-layered standees which look kind of three-dimensional, and you can appreciate them from different angles. I like how Amiya and Chen stand by each other. Mm. It's pretty cheerful. Yeah, I like that. And whereas the other one exudes a more casual feeling, it is a scene where you Nectis, Gabriel, and Tommy Me go on a jungle adventure, wondering what will they find out there. Mm, something interesting out there. Yes, I agree. Well, here they come. The merch we designed specially for Who is Real. They're just as unique as the event. They look so cool. I caught a bitey there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's still introduce them. Okay. From the left, it is a vertical squirrel that you can hang on a wall, a door, or wherever you like. The painting is on a rice paper. It is a special kind of paper that many ink paintings are painted on. And we decided to use the traditional Chinese mounting technique that we place the rice paper on a cloth to make it look, how should I put it? More ancient like, I would say. Yeah, I love this. I see Nian, Dusk, and Saga on the scroll. Mm. And wait, is that Mr. Nothing on the scroll? Uh, I mean, the picture on the scroll? Yeah, yeah, I see that. Oh, I bet you didn't see Baidi was there too. Oh, too busy looking at the, the, the other Baidi. Yes, <laughs> it is so cute. The Baidi plushie is the cute enemy Baidi, obviously, from Who is Real. I think you guys will fight them a lot in the game. I really want to touch it, you know? I'm curious how it feels. I mean, it's made of polyester fiber and filled with cotton, so I think it wouldn't be bad. <laughs> yeah. Lastly, we will have a porcelain mug that comes with an acrylic poster. And there are chibi characters on the mug. Saga, Mr. Nothing, Dusk, and Lava. Yep, yep. More especially, we have applied a unique mechanism, Mark of Hui and Ming, to the design of the mug. How it works is that you pour hot water into the mug and then you place the mug on the coaster with the look of Mark of Hui and Ming and the black color will turn white. Cool, I want to try it. When will they be available? Well, they will officially be in the store very soon. So pay attention to our social media, doctors. Of course, I'll be checking them out. But we do have a special giveaway event. Doctors will have a chance to win the merch for free. How do we participate? We will post a giveaway event announcement on our official Twitter and Facebook account on July 26th. And the giveaway will last for five days. The prize will include some selected merch we just introduced and some limited CV signature boards. Signature boards? Can I get Aoyuki's signature? I want to get it too. Okay, for more details about the event, please pay attention to our social media announcement on July 26th. Next, I will have a big announcement. I've been waiting for this. Let us know. Okay, it's about a special crossover. Hear me out. Arknights will collaborate with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Rainbow Six? Yes. We hope that a collaboration could bring doctors a new and unique gaming experience. Yeah, I'm excited about the crossover between these two games mm. in terms of worldview, gameplay, and the platform. Yes, the crossover event Operation Originium Dust will be going live on August 18th with new collaborated operators, outfits, furniture, and a new game mode. The, the new story in the event will feature operators from Team Rainbow who arrive in terror by accident. Mm -hmm. And the narrative will develop in a dusty desert with crisis and mysteries waiting for doctors to discover and solve. What would happen to the operators who step foot on a strange continent? And what will the adventure be like? I bet doctors are craving to find out just as I am. Yes. I can't wait to see the first meet between Team Rainbow and Rhodes Island and how they fight alongside each other. That will be the best part. And there will be four operators from Team Rainbow on the mission. You want to know who the first one is? 
it is Tachanka. I know that many fans of Rainbow Six also call him Lord. That is actually also his outfit's name. I will circle back to it later. <laughs> Tachanka is an event reward five-star guard. Mm. During the event, doctors can redeem his tokens with Rhodes Island supply ration coupons, mm -hmm. which you can get by clearing the event stages. Yes, and moving to the next operator, we will have Frost a five-star specialist and a master of traps. I guess she still remembers how to be a trap operator after coming to Terra. Mm -hmm. Doctors can manage the placement of her welcome mats. Mm. She is really a strong operator that requires tactics and very fun to play as well. I hope everyone can try her in both games. The next operator who is joining Arc Knights is five-star defender. Blitz. Ah, it's rare to see him without the mask, right? But here he comes. Although he's carrying a shield, he's actually an attacking operator in Rainbow Six Siege. Mm, really? And he's kept his ability to deal high damage in terror. Mm, you'll be surprised. I bet. Mm. The last one we're introducing is the six-star operator, a sniper. Oh, a sniper. I think it's only reasonable to see a sniper coming from a tactical shooter game, you know? Her name is Ash. As a team leader, Ash has been reliable. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she guides the team to start the adventures in Terra. Yes, one more thing I want to bring up is that the voiceover of these operators will all be in English. We hope that it could give doctors a new auditory experience. The three operators we just introduced will be available in the limited headhunting opening from August 18th to September 1st. Mm. Doctors will have a higher chance to get them among all the operators in this banner, and it is guaranteed to pull six-star sniper Ash in 120 rows. What's more, after the first time you pull Operator Frost or Blitz, the next five-star operator you get is guaranteed to be the other of these two. Yes. All the operators will be event limited and will not join any other standard banner after the event ends. We hope every doctor can get whoever you want. To do our utmost to help every doctor get the limited operators, mm. we'll be giving away an expert headhunting permit as a login reward. Mm. Doctors can claim it by simply logging into the game. Wow. And please notice that the permit will expire on September 1st. So please don't forget to log in before it's gone. We're also holding a sign-in event that gives doctors another expert headhunting permit by signing in cumulatively for seven days. Yes, you will not have to sign in consecutively to claim all the rewards, but you won't want to miss all the fun of the events, will you? In addition to the bunch of rewards, we will have four outfits this time for Ash, Tachanka, Schwartz, and Liskam. Mm. They'll be available at the store for a limited time during the event. Mm. I would definitely want to check them out, especially seeing Ash in that cute hat. It's like she's trying to do what locals do. <laughs> I love Schwartz wearing a hat with the same style. Yes. I'm starting to doubt her ears, though. Don't be. <laughs> okay. Along with the outfits, there will be a themed furniture set, special equipment exhibition room available during the event. Doctors can obtain the whole set by redeeming in the commissary, and you can also get it from the store. Mm, okay. And don't forget the new Lucky Job furniture set, Walter Interior Sensations. Mm, all right, sorry to say that, but I believe that's all for today. Oh, that went fast. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, doctors, for tuning in and sticking with us during the live stream. I know there was and will be a lot going on. And I really appreciate Alex for spending the last hour with us. Of course, thank you. I enjoyed the time too. Mm. Hope every doctor enjoys the new event, Who is Real, and gets the operators you want. Absolutely. Hope to see you next time. See you, doctors. Bye-bye.
そのもの一筆で人間をことごとく描く土材動画クナプンヌ生成エルテンそれが何私には関係ないわここもとご老じまするはカゴの鳥水面の月必勝マットーセントス鬼人変人あまた凡人アークナイツガチュウジンこの世界でいつまでどこまで信じられる分かるように話せ人がいつまぶたを閉じるのかしら